I was, uh, I'm, you know, as you know, I'm a prof, so I was very lucky to have sat on a, a oral examination for an indigenous uh, scholar. And um, she did this fantastic um, examination of dance, uh, specifically jingle dress. And jingle dress is a specific form. And she talked about um, the origins, like where that dance came from, which families, you know, how, how it originated, how it began. And she said, you know, of course, it was meant in, in this context. It was meant in this really specific frame of, of, of practice and who did the dance and where they did the dance. And, and since that time, it spread until now, you know, 2021. It is probably the dominant form of uh, uh, women dancing in the powwow context. There's jingle dress everywhere. Like you mean everywhere. You mean North America. You mean Canada. You mean Central America, America, South America. You mean Turtle Turtle Island. Turtle Island. Yeah, North America. So uh, at powwows, like so, more young women and women are doing jingle dress than probably all the other dance forms put together. It's it's incredibly popular. It's, its popularity has exploded. However, it started off as this really very specific thing with this family, and it's uh, Anishinaabe origin and um, and she talked about how the dance was connected to all kinds of um, cultural ways of knowing and um, it's it, it started off as a, a very spiritual dance however um, it's a it's a dance for healing it's a dance to help people heal um, but in competition, that's not what it is. You know, it's, it's, that's its origin, but it's transmuted and transformed. And, you know, th there was discussion in her, in her dissertation about, you know, should this be? You know, there's lots of reasons why it shouldn't be. Um, should and this be commercial, is that what you mean? Should this kind of dance be used for a commercial? Uh, to, to, be, to be used uh, in competition, where right. people win money to right. do the dance. Right. And what was the conclusion it was it was uh, she did not actually make a statement about whether it should be or shouldn't be she presented arguments for why this argument exists I think it's like I think it's easy for us to go it is or it isn't that's really a binary kind of frame for yeah. you know how something is yeah this um, is right this is wrong yeah. You're good, you're bad, all that kind of binary nightmare that we get into. Yeah, yeah. So she didn't do that. She, she, she just talked about it as a, as a larger historical idea, connected it to language, connected it to stories, and, uh, you know, allowed the reader to go, oh, thank you. That's important to know.